Good morning, everyone. Today's message has been prepared by Edith Espinoza. She is the director of women's ministry in the Inter-American Division. Everywhere, all over the world today. If you were asked which of our senses are the most essential, what would you say? Certainly all of our five senses are essential, but undoubtedly the sight probably is the most important. Eighty percent of our perceptions come through our eyes, and if any one of the other senses fail for some reason, it's the eyes that will save us from most of the dangers. But do we see as much as we should? Our lives are so hurried that we limit ourselves to the urgent things and give up seeing the profound. How many things and how much go unnoticed in our lives? We live in a world of crisis. The most of us face many difficult situations routinely that we give attention to fraction of things around us. Women struggle every day to get ahead. Many women and men feel lack of love, lack of care, and most of them go unnoticed. Let's see if this works. The main verse has been read by Sister Andrea, found in Job. What does it mean to see? Seeing is perceiving through the sense of sight. This is physical. It is also perceiving feelings and understanding them, which is emotional. It is also cognitive because we perceive intelligently and attentively. God sees you and you are precious in his sight. He sees and identifies your physical situation. He sees and understands how you feel. He sees and pays attention to what you need. Today we will consider three biblical women who were seen by God in their need, as well as Edith in an airplane at the end. One of the greatly impressive features of nature in this world is the deserts. I remember visiting Namibia and driving through the sands and the desert, and I expected them to be empty and boring. Perhaps some of you do also, but I was very wrong. It was one of the most interesting, eye-opening experience I've had. This is my story. <laughs> we have many deserts in this world, but the Atacama Desert of South America is the most arid. It is a desert plateau about 1,600 kilometers, and it is located by the Pacific Coast, west of Andes Mountains. When we speak of deserts, we cannot forget Sahara. It is the hottest, hot desert, the biggest hot desert in the world. But do you know which is the largest desert on Earth? A lot of us think it's Sahara, but it's not. 
Does anyone know? Is it is Antarctica desert? <laughs> when we speak of deserts, we recall Hagar. She is mentioned in Zen Genesis 16 and 21, walking in a desert, the wilderness of Beersheba. How did she find herself in the desert? She was a foreign slave, if you recall. She had no autonomy, yet she apparently lived peacefully until she faced crisis with her mistress. The first time she went into the desert was because she was mistreated and wanted to escape from Sarah. But the second time, she was sent away, taking only her son Ishmael, some bread, and a water skin. Imagine what it what this involved. She had lost everything, home. A family she was used to, food and water, and the security of a community. As Hagar walked, she became disoriented and lost. The Bible says she was wandering. Imagine not knowing where you are, or where to go, or being at risk of great danger. And she saw that her son Ishmael was about to die. She cried out to God, and He heard the weeping boy and his mother. God opened Hagar's eyes to see a fountain in front of her, so her son will not die, not today. God was faithful to His earlier promise that a great nation would come from Him. Proof. Of the fulfillment we see today, as with Hagar in the desert, God sees you in your desert. We all have our deserts, whatever they may be. God sees when we feel disoriented, not knowing what to do, where to go, or to whom to turn. God sees your affliction when you. When you lose what you need and what you love the most, God sees when your life is collapsing around you and you see no way out. God sees your physical and emotional loneliness. That's when God manifests Himself and gives you hope. He takes care of you and provides a fountain of gushing hope. God lifts you up. When the world abandons you, you can depend on His promise. In Hebrews thirteen five, for He Himself has said, "I will never leave, leave you, or forsake you," which is quoting Psalms. God saw Hagar. God was her strength. He was her light. God held her in His hands. He is the God who sees. The first time Hagar was in desert, God found her by a fountain. This time, He not only saw her, but He opened her eyes to see the water in front of her. Do not be afraid in your desert, because God sees you too. This is the promise from God we can take to heart. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, found in Psalms 46, verse one. We come to our second woman, and she experiences. Incredible pain. Who knows Rispa, who is recorded in Second Samuel? Can anyone tell us who is Rispa? Hi, 
I am hearing something. Yes, that's right. She is mentioned in chapter 21, verses 10 to 14 in 2 Samuel. <clears throat> She was a concubine of King Saul and mother of two of her sons. Her sons were hanged by the Gibeonites for the wrongs done by King Saul. Imagine seeing your children die. Most of us can't. Parents who love their children feel their children are the most valuable aspect of our lives. They hope to see children grow, develop skills, start families, succeed in their profession, but no parent probably expects to see their child die. Rizpah showed her love and pain of losing her sons by taking a sackcloth to the place where the bodies hung. She spread the sackcloth on the rock, watching the bodies of her sons go hard, then soft, then decay. This would be painful enough, but imagine constantly shooing the scavengers and birds away day and night for about six years, uh, six months, sorry, six months. She was sleeping there, eating and mourning. The pain and sadness this woman felt was terrible and excruciating. As with Rizpa, God sees us in our tragedies. God sees your tears when your life is out of control. God does not plan your pain, but has ordained a time for everything, even a time to cry, as written in Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1, to 1 and 4. Knowing that God is in control does not always take away our pain but it gives us peace and hope. God gives emotional, physical, and spiritual healing and uses all things to work together for good to those who love him, to those who are called according to his promise, found in Romans 8:28. God sees your pain and he can transform your pain into a blessing. God saw Rispa. God was her strength and light. God held her in his hands. He is the God who sees. God restored Rispa through her tragedy because water filled the land after three years of no rain. And King David tenderly buried the bodies of her children with King Saul in the tomb of Kish, their grandfather. Take this verse to heart. It's God's promise to you. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. At some point in life, all of us have experienced shame, for something we did or we said. An author has said, shame is the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing we are flawed and therefore unworthy of acceptance and belonging. We all know the story of the adulterous woman in John 8, verses 2 to 12. Her story is full of shame that her name is not mentioned. She is simply called an adulteress. What this woman had to face was not easy. Imagine early in the morning when the Pharisees caught her in the act and hauled her out of her bed. What a sight it must have been as they took her through the streets to the temple. Everyone must have been watching, 
looking through the windows and behind the doors, murmuring, what has she been doing? At times when we are criticized for our actions, judged for our unwise choices, or waiting for the punishment of our deeds, we feel shame. The effects of shame span across many debilitating deficiencies, including insecurity and impediment in developing abilities. The results can become so severe as to self-hatred and suicidal tendencies. The Pharisees took the woman to Jesus and asked how he would judge her. You will recall he didn't reply. He began writing on the ground. When Jesus finally stood up, he saw no one except the woman. Jesus fixed his eyes only on her. She must have felt that nothing mattered to him except herself. Shame was killing this woman, but Jesus saw her need and covered her shame. Not with the blanket, but with his compassion and forgiveness, showing his love unconditionally and fully. As it is written in 1 Peter 4, 8, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Stop carrying the burden of your shame. Jesus already took the burden upon himself and paid the price for your sin and shame to be covered and removed. May I ask all the brothers to read this in unison? Isaiah 53. As with the adulterous woman, God looks and sees your failures. He sees what makes you worry, what makes you feel insecure or unworthy, what makes you weep. Your shame may be only known to you, but he sees it. Yet God does not condemn you. He does not blame you. He does not criticize you. Instead, he covers you with love and forgiveness. Then he restores you and transforms you. Only by encountering Jesus personally can we find joy and full satisfaction. God saw the adulterous woman. He was her strength and her light. God held her in his hands. He is the God who sees. And when God looks, he does something about what he sees. And this is the promise we can take. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Romans 10, 11. Edith was scheduled for a flight. Although the weather that day was not favorable, the airline decided the flight would take place. On the runway, the pilot waited in the heavy downpour, and the plane took off in the middle of that storm. As it rose, it entered the dense black clouds, charged with electricity of lightning bolts. Inside the plane, people were tense and nervous. After a few minutes of turbulence, the plane passed through those dark clouds. 
and I think we have experienced some of us, and immediately the lightning ceases and the sun shines in the sky. It was a beautiful day above the stormy clouds. As with Edith, God sees the cloudy days when you feel a gray atmosphere surrounding you. Storm of a crisis may break upon you. Black clouds may be loaded with uncertainty, causing you to feel overwhelmed. Sometimes everything suddenly shifts, and in a moment you become unbalanced with significant changes such as divorce, lack of a job, illness, Some of us feel lonely. The situation gets worse. But remember, the situation is only momentary and it will pass. Above the clouds, you will see the light. Everything will become clear and beautiful moments will come. God sees you through the darkness. Nothing happens that God doesn't notice because He is the God who sees. He is always attentive to your needs. He sees everything you suffer, everything that wears you down. David had times when he felt overwhelmed by storms, when he beseeched God to bend down to hear his cry for help. These selected lines from Psalms 86, I would like the sisters, our women, to read in unison. I cry, give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. God sees you. He is your strength and he is your light. God holds you in his hands. He is the God who sees God sees everything you are now because he knows you fully. And he also sees everything that you will become in his strength. Take the verse to heart. It is a promise to you. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Soon we will see Jesus face to face. His eyes of love will meet yours. Not only will he see you, but he will hug you and give you the crown of victory and take you home to be with him for eternity. He will do this because he is your God, the God who sees you and loves you. We need to leave everything in the hands of Jesus, our crisis, loneliness, fears, failures. Will you bring to Jesus the pain that overwhelms you? Will you give him those things that embarrass you? shame you, make you feel incapable of one unworthy. We don't need to hide or run away. Don't be ashamed. In your pain and need, in your desert, come to Jesus. Jesus sees your need and your fears. He can restore what is damaged, heal your pain, and give you purpose to your life. He sees you not as you are, but as who you can become in him. I was blessed as I was preparing for this sermon, 
If you are as blessed as I am, please stand with me. And we will bring our burdens to Jesus. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for being our God. We are broken. We are ashamed. We know not where to turn. If it is not for you, Father, we would be forever lost. But because we believe in you, because you have promised to us that you be with us through our thick and thin, that you would hold our hand with your right hand to the day Jesus comes to bring us home. Please be with us and lead us to that day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.